The next phase of the awakening has begun and there is no going back. We're not supposed to go back. This process is about moving forwards. Hi everyone, welcome back to Undefined Life. It's Tash here. Having taken quite a significant hiatus from social media, I felt called to record this video today. And this comes a few days after what was dubbed Freedom Day here in the UK, the 19th of July. We find ourselves at a very interesting juncture in our evolutionary process as a collective. There has been a lot going on in my personal life, a lot of change occurring personally, which has been disruptive and challenging and exciting. But there has also been an awful lot emerging for me within my internal landscape that I've needed time to process and understand. And that process of introspection has illuminated a very deep grief that has been present for me over the last couple of weeks and months that I wasn't consciously aware of. And when I really delved into what that grief was, I realized that it was a grief for the old, the old normal, the old way. Life before COVID, life before this pandemic. Even though intellectually I've known that this is coming for some time, those who are awake and aware of this agenda will be aware that this has been long in the making, what we're experiencing as a collective. But it's one thing to intellectually understand and digest that knowing, and it's another thing to emotionally process that and all of the implications of it happening. And so I've been grieving. I've been in a deep state of grief within myself because I am shedding the attachment to the old way, the old normal. And that grief that I've been experiencing has also been married with a very deep sense of knowing that it's time to prepare for what's coming. I feel that spirit has really been calling me recently to declutter internally and externally, to clear my inner landscape to prepare myself and to set a foundation that is going to be sturdy and strong that will carry me through what's coming. So that's the reason for recording this video today. I wanted to address this idea of returning to the old normal that so many people are longing for. And I understand it. This collective experience we've had over the last year and a half has been disruptive it has destabilized us. It has shaken many people awake from the slumber of complacency. As a humanity, we've grown very accustomed to being comfortable and at ease. We've grown very accustomed to not having to do very much or try very hard or adapt or problem solve or respond to immediate changes in our environment. In many ways, we've been devolving. And the process that's occurring right now with this pandemic, with the V, is all part of a catalyzing experience for us to move forwards as a collective, to evolve, to expand, because we're not here to devolve. That is the nature of an egoic consciousness, of a parasitic consciousness, but it's not the nature of God. It's not our divine nature. And we are being given this experience in the form world to move us back into divine alignment, to awaken us to our complacency, to just how comfortable we've become as a humanity, as a species, to shake us awake so that we become aware of all of the residual fears and wounding that we've been carrying and distracting from and avoiding and denying within ourselves and within the world. Because we also can't take those fears and wounding with us where we're going. The rose tinted spectacles really are beginning to slip now. And if you're aware of what's happening, you'll see that more and more people are starting to become restless. There is this sense of apprehension in the collective. I don't know if you can feel it, but the energies at the moment are climaxing. They're building towards something. 
you might feel that personally or you might sense it collectively. Things are gaining momentum because we are being brought to a boil. We are being exposed very gradually to the underbelly of this beast, the shadows, the darkest depths of humanity's potential, the unconscious ways of being that we haven't been willing to acknowledge. All of it is coming to light. All of it is coming to light so that we begin to acknowledge and live from a place of truth. We have been in denial of truth, in avoidance of truth, distracted from truth within our own lives and as a collective. And this process is undoing that, dismantling that, so that we can become aligned with truth once again. This is, of course, a transition as we move from the Piscean age to the age of Aquarius. This is a very pivotal, significant time in humanity's evolution. And if you find yourself here on my channel or on my Instagram page, you are no doubt being called to acknowledge the part that you're here to play in this process. We all have a part to play. We all have something unique to learn and offer at this time. It's no coincidence or accident that you're alive during the most significant transit humanity has experienced in recent history. You are here because you have a part to play. Many people watching this will identify as light workers, evolved souls, empaths, highly sensitive individuals, star seeds, awakened beings. All of you have a part to play. Many of you might be healers, light warriors, champions of truth, free spirits, and all of us who feel called to help mobilize change on the planet, positive change, are here to act as a bridge between the old way of being and the new way that's coming. So let's take a moment to discuss what we mean by the old way, the old normal, and why are we grieving that? So the old normal the life that we knew before this pandemic emerged was a life of illusion, denial, avoidance, suppression, distraction. As a collective, we've got exceptionally good at avoiding the things that are uncomfortable to face. And what that means is that we have been burying our heads in the sand, turning the other way, stuffing down, as a humanity, we have chosen to remain ignorant to the fact. We have chosen to turn a blind eye to the fact that there are people with vast amounts of power, wealth and control in positions of authority in the world who do not have our best interests at heart. The corruption, the deception, the lies, the deviance runs deep. The collective shadows run deep. And we can't move forwards until we look at those shadows, until we face them within ourselves and within our world, until we acknowledge the fact that the systems that we have so long worshipped, the individuals that we have put on pedestals, the authority figures that we have handed our power and authority over to, do not care, are not there to support us, and are in fact constructed in such a way so that they keep us disempowered and codependent. And this age that we're moving into, the age of Aquarius, is all about freedom, liberation, breaking the shackles and chains of conformity. It's all about authenticity, embracing truth. It's about community. It's about co-creation. But we're just at the beginning of that process of moving away from the Piscean paradigm, which was built on patriarchy, the suppression of truth, the suppression of divine wisdom and was manufactured in such a way that kept us highly dependent on external individuals and structures. We're moving away from that paradigm now, and we're moving now into a new way of being, but we're at the very beginning of that process. And it is not going to be an easy transition because many people are resistant to change, naturally. The ego hates change. But the world we currently occupy is hell. Hell is not a place, it's an experience, it's a state of being, and we're in hell at the moment, as a collective. The words I keep hearing from spirit are collective mania. That's what's coming. And when I say mania, I'm referring to 
the origins of the word, which means madness, we have descended into a collective mania. And that mania is building. More and more people are becoming restless. Their souls are desperate to break free from the conditioned and highly programmed way of living that they've become accustomed to. But they're too fearful to surrender. And so this pandemic, this unfolding, is forcing us over the cliff. We don't get a choice now. This evolutionary process is happening with or without our consent. And so as we move into the next phase of this evolutionary process, the next phase of this awakening, there will be more restlessness. There will be more dissonance. The external world will become more disorderly, not less. That is because we need to purge it all before we can move forward as a collective, as a humanity. There's no room for complacency anymore. And so with that in mind, bearing in mind that we do face challenging times, particularly those of us who are not in alignment or agreement with the mainstream narrative, the predominant mode of consciousness, I wanted to share three tips for how we can navigate this process that's coming. So let's dive in. What three things can we be mindful of moving forwards? And the first thing I want to address is the need for us to live and speak our truth. And I say this as we're approaching the full moon in Aquarius at the end of July or towards the end of July. And I feel that this is a perfect encapsulation, this energy of breaking free, breaking free from the fears that have kept us limited and playing small, breaking free from the fears of judgment from others, the time for hiding, for dimming our light has passed. For those of you watching, you are not here by accident. None of us are here by accident. We all have a part to play in this process. And it's time for those of you who feel the call to awaken to your purpose, your part. It's time to step up. And so we are being given the opportunity now as the world becomes more divided, as the world becomes more dissonant, as we are pushed further out of our comfort zones, we are being given the opportunity to start living and embracing and embodying what truth means for us as individuals. And your truth is going to look very different to my truth. That's okay. You're just here to live your truth, whatever that means for you. So if you haven't been living or speaking your truth, it's time to start understanding why. What is holding you back? what fears and limiting beliefs hold you back. And it's time to begin to let go of those fears and limiting beliefs because they keep you bound to the small self, to the egoic self, when you are here to be so much more. You are an expression of divine consciousness and you are here to be the living embodiment of divine consciousness, your own unique expression of that divine consciousness. You have unique talents, gifts, qualities to share that no one else on the planet has had or ever will have. And our time in this incarnation is relatively brief. So what is the point in hiding and dimming? We only get one shot in this life. Make it count. Do what you came here to do. I'm in that process with you of learning to speak and live my truth. It's not easy. But like many of you, I feel the call now to embody that truth not only for myself, but to be part of the collective change on the planet. And I encourage you to do the same. The second point I wanted to raise is the need for us to build spiritual strength and to practice good spiritual hygiene. So what do I mean by this? By building spiritual strength, I mean fortifying our connection to present moment consciousness. Because in the present, we are connected to our innate guidance system, our intuition, and to spirit. When we are not in present moment consciousness, we are either occupied by the past, memories, what ifs, contemplations, or fantasies and imaginings of the future, neither of which are true. They're real in that we experience them mentally, but they're not true. The only real truth is present moment experience. And so coming back to present moment consciousness allows us to slow the momentum of the mind helps us to become aware of how attached we are to certain thoughts or stories and allows us to 
become aware of what's real and true in this moment so that we can be connected to our truth and to spirit. And by practicing good spiritual hygiene, I mean finding practices that help to keep you awake, aware, connected, cleansed, energized, that help to move energy through your body. And there are a number of ways that we can do this. The yoga asana practice, dance, exercise, taking a walk in nature, grounding in nature, going for a swim in the ocean, practicing Reiki, light language, mindfulness, meditation, creating art, creating music. It's finding ways to purify and energize ourselves because we need to get clear for what's coming. We don't want to be bogged down and concerned with conditioning, programming and fears. So practicing good spiritual hygiene will allow us to remain clear and open as a channel for what's coming so that we can be more closely in contact with our intuition and make decisions that are based on feeling and from the heart rather than from fear and conditioning. And the final point I wanted to raise is the importance of holding the vision and vibration of the world that we want to create. I know certainly in the last few weeks, I have really struggled to retain a sense of hope or connection to the vision of the new earth because the world has felt like such a dense place to be. And my tendency in this life has been to want to escape this world and occupy the higher realms, be in contact with the esoteric and the magic. And I've not always been that good at being here and now in the foreign world. But it's in this world that we will create the new earth. Heaven is a state of being and it's possible for us to create it here on earth, but it comes with a dramatic shift in consciousness. And so it's really important for those of us that are aware of what's happening and who feel called to hold the light and seed the light on the planet at this time. It's important for us to remain true to the vision for what we want to create, to retain that in our hearts, even when things in the external world become convoluted and complex and messy and disorderly. More than ever, holding that vision and vibration is going to be important because we are co-creators of this existence. Every thought we think, every feeling that we identify with, it all helps to birth what's coming. It helps to birth future timelines. So what do you want to create for yourself and for the earth? It's time to get clear on that so that you can begin to embody the vision and vibration that you want to create. So as well as the full moon in Aquarius, we're also moving into the energy of Leo, which is my star sign and the energy of leo is bold it's a fire sign it's unapologetic and certainly the momentum that's building in the collective now is calling for us to be bold to be unapologetic to not apologize for our truth and to stand for what we feel is right and it's going to be needed our boundaries will be tested our truth will be questioned and we need to stand even in those moments which is why Building spiritual strength and having good spiritual practices is so important. So I'll leave it there. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if what I've said has resonated. Let me know if your experiences recently. These are certainly interesting times and they will continue to become more and more interesting as this process continues. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do and come and find me on Instagram at undefinedlife. I look forward to connecting with you there also. And I'll see you again next time.